give just a minute for those that, that uh, will be watching with us and uh, receiving with us this morning. Uh, does everybody know where we are today? <laughs> Philippians, everybody do their... <laughs> What would you say? I'm sorry. What? I, would... I said in Webster. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. It's free break. So. That's right. Yeah. Got to have a little joy. I right? think she's teasing you with the little microscopic copy of the PTP. Yes, yeah. Of course, I'm having to see this. That's, that's, the one, that's the one I've been using yeah. until I got this version. What a tease you all. So I sat in my closet with the light on, <laughs> the fluorescent light on, so I can actually see it. This one's not too bad. Yeah. This. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Yeah. I know everybody seems to have been, you know, getting their. Uh, I, I just think it's such a wonderful uh, um, translation. Uh, it's not a paraphrase; it's a translation, and what an yeah. awesome translation it is. Um, okay. Well, we'll get we'll get started here. If you um, if you have your notes. Um, the message this we're, we, we're on the third message of four uh, in what we call the heavenly letters good morning Mary and let's see if y'all don't say hello it's hard for me to see the little pictures too much there so good morning Todd and Mary um, and I think I see uh, see I can't I can't make out the little pictures uh, anyway, tell me if the volume is okay, and if it's not, we'll try to make an adjustment to that. But um, we're on the third myth, third of the what I call the heavenly letters. Uh, we've got we've got Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and next week is Colossians. Um, and again, this week we're kind of giving a, a preferential uh, treatment to the the position of the believer. Um, and I think that's so important because if we want to get into the real practice of, of, of what true Christianity is, we've got to know our position. We can't go we can't go to what we're supposed to be doing until we know who we are. Because when you know who you are, what you're doing will come natural. It'll become a fruit in our life, the fruit that's produced by the Holy Spirit in a life that's been surrendered, like we are like that man. I'm gonna be singing that song all week by now. So the life is surrendered to the understanding that it's it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me, and the, you know the yeah, it's just such a supernatural uh, these supernatural letters. Joy, heaven's joy is the title of the message today, and uh, what a what a what a letter that Paul wrote here. Um, uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians, and it's starting with the first section of your notes there, contains 19 references to joy, gladness, and rejoicing, more than any other letter he wrote. Uh, and he wrote this from where? From a prison cell. Uh, most of us would be worried, concerned about how we're going to get out of here. And here he's writing, he's writing letters about joy. Uh, and, and, and I think he did this on purpose to the Philippian church because of where Philippians got started. The Philippian church is probably linked to one of the most supernatural events in scripture of, of its a supernatural beginnings to the church in Philippi. Um, and we're gonna look at that. Um, the Philipp Philippian church had its supernatural beginnings in Acts 16. So let's go to Acts 16 for just a minute. Uh, and then we're gonna get back to uh, the, the letter. But I want you to see where this starts out. Um, it's so it's so important to understand um, the uh, in starting with verse 16 um, if you if you look at I think it's uh, um, I'm gonna open my because I want to get this I want to get this right I was reading this out of the New King James Version Again, in your notes, if I don't put a reference, it's New King James Version, and if I do, I'll put the reference of what it is, like the Passion or whatever, just a reminder to that. But Acts, um, Acts chapter 16. Um, 16, yeah. For starting with verse uh, Eight. 8. <clears throat> Uh, 
Um, I want to back up for just a second because I, I think it's so important for us to understand uh, the significance of, of the uh, context um, in as they were as Paul see Paul had a he wanted to go to a particular to another place and it says the Holy Spirit forbade him from going somewhere else and I used to read that and I think why would the Holy Spirit forbid Paul to go somewhere to preach the gospel yeah. I used to, it used to confuse me it's like it's like he didn't really it's, because that's our old way of thinking isn't it mm -hmm. Well, those people didn't deserve the gospel. They, there was something so <laughs> reckless and bad about those people over there that I'm not even going to let Paul go there and preach the good news. That's the way I used to literally. I used to interpret that. Mm -hmm. That he, you know, okay, you can't go over there. I don't want you. I don't want you going near those people. That's just not the gospel. But when you read it in context, you realize that because God had a God had a higher plan yeah. with what He wanted Paul to do, and not don't go there yet. Yeah, it would yeah. have been better if he had said that. Yeah. And, and maybe it does in the, in the original language, I don't know. But he just said, don't, I, I, he forbid, the Holy Spirit forbid, because I've got something on the table I really want you to, I want you to, uh, to, to do right now. And uh, so if you look at it, um, that um, starting with that verse, uh, while staying there, he was staying in a place called Troas, uh, Paul experienced a supernatural, ecstatic, this is the Passion Translation, ecstatic vision during the night. Uh, a man from Macedonia appeared before him, and this is where Philippi, where the Philippians are, pleading with him, you must come across the sea to Macedonia and help us. You must. Um, and then after Paul had this vision, and I, I really believe, and I know the person that wrote the translation here uh, mentioned the same thing. I believe that he was seeing the Philippian jailer in that vision, standing by his bed. Wow. I believe that's who it was, uh, pleading with him. So after Paul had this vision, uh, it said, we immediately prepared to cross over to Macedonia. You know, when you have something like that happen, yeah. <laughs> you go from the opposite of what God for, for, forbidding to this is, this is the God's plan. And so they immediately prepared to cross over. And so they went to they went straight to the course to the island uh, um, Samoth Samothrace, and then the next day to Not Neapolis. Finally, we reached Philippi, a major city in the Roman colony of Macedonia, and remained there for a number of days. Now, what I want you to see with this: first of all, he, he runs into the, some people praying uh, on the side of a river. Lydia, he meets Lydia, who's a businesswoman who made exquisite purple cl cloth, and, and she was actually a Jewish convert. Uh, so she was Jewish before she, she became Jewish, and then here comes Paul, the, the, ex, the Jew that's gotten the message of the gospel, just happens to be there. Mm -hmm. And while Paul shared the good news with her, God opened her heart to receive Paul's message. She devoted herself to the Lord and was, and was baptized, her and her entire family. And that's another thing I want you to see as you're reading this, that families, the entire families were included. Mm -hmm. uh, Afterwards, she urged us to stay in her home, saying, since I'm now a believer in the Lord, come and stay in my house. So they were persuaded to stay there. And then, uh, just like with any supernatural thing, and the reason I'm saying this this morning is because I think we're standing in a, a similar position uh, uh, globally and spiritually in the world today. I believe we're entering into a place where uh, many, um, if you don't listen to uh, Rob Rufus, I would recommend you, you get on his website and begin to listen he's going to be next month there was a Nigerian woman in Texas she's an attorney she's she migrated here from Nigeria became pretty successful but she contacted Rob um, and this next month in April they're going to do a zoom simulcast in every nation in Africa she has a, she has she says that her nation there's so much there's so much uh, uh, misunderstanding and confusion and mysticism and all kinds of things going on in the continent of Africa and she got in touch with Rob and said you've got the message you've got the message uh, that we need to it's, it's almost like the vision we're standing standing said please come over <clears throat> but isn't it amazing that the, this the next month he's going to be on a simulcast zoom uh, starting with doing the basics of the message of the basics of the gospel of grace simulcasting <clears throat> every nation at the same time, 
on the continent of Africa. Yeah. And he's and he's uh, he's giving those messages out now. He's 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 giving them through his through his ministry uh, of what he's going to do in April. He's given us a preview of all that, and there's a book that's coming out as well about it. But I just think that we're in the same position. This pandemic has caused a, a, a retooling of what the church really should be about. And I think, I mean, I, I think the Lord is going to use this in a supernatural way, even with our little our little uh, fellowship here. Um, I believe the Lord is, you know, we're, we've got, there's so much technology, so many things going on, but when it comes right down to it, um, when, the, when, the, when something supernatural happens and the message that he wants people to hear is being preached, we're not, we're, there's going to be something happen that we don't have to make happen. Yeah. Uh, it's going to happen as a result of what we're declaring. It's, going to, it's not going to come by the works of our, our good works. It's going to come by the perfect work of Christ, the message of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I believe he's going to, uh, he's stirring in me with this Philippian letter what he wants to do supernaturally in our, in our fellowship, in our group. And so I have an, I have expectations that we talked about last week. You know, young men are going to dream dreams and old men are going to see visions. So mm -hmm. I believe we're going to be seeing things that are going to be happening, and we don't we won't have to uh, coax people to come. What was it? What was the guy in um, in California that uh, had put the basket over his head for uh, oh, Azusa Street? Azusa Street. No. What was his name? The black man from yeah. Alvin, Texas. Yeah. Uh, he just sat with this basket over his head, and, and the Holy Spirit came came in a supernatural way there, and people came there from all over the world. He didn't have to advertise or get on the internet or do any. There wasn't any internet then, but there was nothing that he had to do other than the word got out. Uh, the Spirit of God was active in the in. The, so I believe that there's there's something about this, um, and a lot of it has to do with the joy uh, that, that that the message of the gospel is supposed to bring, and what it does to our perspective where we where we are living. But immediately at the time where Paul comes into town and he's bringing the gospel based upon the supernatural vision, it's a supernatural vision, then immediately this python spirit flares up um, and he goes and talks. There's a slave girl there was, that had, uh, had a demonic spirit that she was given. She was fortune telling for people, uh, which, you know, you, you, can, you can have supernatural power uh, by people. I, I call them their familiar spirits. They've been in gen for generations. They, they didn't have a lifespan like we do. So they've lived, some of them in our, know our families and all, all about us have been assigned to us for generations. Uh, but she kept shouting, these men are servants of the great high God and they're, and they're telling us how to be saved. Uh, day after day she continued to do this until Paul greatly annoyed turned and said, it, to the spirit indwelling her, I command you in the name of Jesus, the anointed one, to come out of her now. That moment, the spirit came out of her, and then all of a sudden, her owners, when her owners, they own this girl, um, this was common in what we studied. In, anybody study mythology and literature? Mm -hmm. They actually believed in these were these were demonic beings that they worshipped. Apollos mm -hmm. and this Python was a, was a, a minister, one of the demonic realms that ministered under Apollos. Uh, you can read that in the notes at the bottom here in the, on the page in your in your in your uh, passion translation. So when they realized that their potential for making money out of her was gone, then they dragged him and to the, they dragged Paul and Silas to the magistrates and the authorities. And they, when they appeared, the Roman soldiers, uh, the, the, the slave owners, uh, leveled accusations against them, saying these Jews are troublemakers. They're, they're throwing our city into confusion. Mm -hmm. Needed to be right. Confusion was already there. He was right. coming to straighten out the confusion. Now they're pushing the Jewish religion down our throats. It's wrong and unlawful for them to promote these Jewish ways, and for we are Romans living in a Roman colony. And then a great crowd gathered, and they were put in. They put him in prison. They, they put him in prison. And, you know, he didn't say one thing about the fact that he was a Roman citizen at no. this point. He didn't make mention of that. He does later. Mm -hmm. He does in the next chapter. Uh, and so, uh, miracles. The title of the next section there is "Miracles Can uh, Can Come Out of Painful Places." So they were severely beaten, thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them securely. So the jailer placed them in the innermost cell of the prison and had their feet bound and chained. I didn't care how much it didn't matter how much he tried to bind them though. The spirit was about to release. So they were undaunted, it says. Paul and Silas were undaunted. Prayed in the middle of the night, singing songs of praise. Uh, you know, uh, 
Hallelujah. I surrender all. <coughs> they were singing songs. They did, you know, they, they and, and uh, while all the other prisoners listened to their worship. Imagine what a, what a strange situation that seemed at the time. But suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Suddenly. A great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. All at once, every prison door flung open and the chains of all the prisoners came off, came loose. Not just, the, not just Paul and Silas, but every prisoner in there. Because what, what does the gospel do? What does the power of the gospel do? God, the, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And so the, 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 what was happening there is illustrating what, what the gospel will do. It loosens, it, 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 it opens every prison door mm -hmm. and it loosens us from everything that chains us to, to all of what we understood and what we had in the past. Mm -hmm. So the startled the jailer awoke and saw every cell door standing open. Assuming they were all, the prisoners had all escaped, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he was personally responsible for them. Had they escaped, he would have been killed. When Paul shouted in the darkness, stop, don't hurt yourself, we're all still here. So this jailer, which I think is, the, I think is who he saw in that, in that vision, uh, he comes to, and, and he led Paul and Silas outside and asked him, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your family. Look at the footnote at the very bottom under the seat. It says the implication is in the original language, you and, and anyone in your household who believes. So it wasn't forced on everybody, but the, the opportunity for salvation was there for the whole family. It wasn't just, it wasn't just a jailer. Um, and so then they, they prophesied, this, I love this, they prophesied the word of the Lord over him. Now look at the footnote on that one. This, this phrase is consistently used, that where it says they prophesied over him. This phrase is consistently used in the Old Testament for prophetic utterance of a supernatural origin. So he, they were given the, the, the man that I think he saw in the vision, and now he had him. He was he was born again, uh, and he prophesied the supernatural message to him. Um, even though the hour was late, he washed their wounds. The the, the, the uh, jailer did. Then he and all his family were baptized. He took Paul and Silas into his home and set them at his table. The jailer and all his family were filled with joy. 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 In their newfound faith in God. Now that's that's where I wanted to stop because, see, this is the origin of the Philippian church. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Yes, it is. But when you when you know this, the context of it, it makes reading the letter all that more powerful. Because see, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit right now, because, you know, super the, the Holy Spirit is a supernatural Holy Spirit. He based upon the de declaration of the gospel of, of, of Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the simplicity of that message, the power in that message, as he said in Romans chapter 1, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed, not the righteousness of man. Man is out of the equation. It's now the righteousness of God through our believing in Christ as our substitute instead of our example. And so joy was the result great joy uh, now let's let's uh, let's go over to uh, Philippians uh, and I'm just going to read just a little bit uh, in the, in the uh, and I, I, I urge you to do this as you're reading don't just read just so you can get the homework done don't just read the don't just read the the, the message look at all look at the uh, it's powerful this man that, that did this translation these uh, these notations that he, that he made and these these uh, letters that he uses to, to give further meaning. It's just, it's just wonderful. Uh, what joy and glory came out of Paul's prison cell. Most of us would be thinking about ourselves and how we could get out, but Paul wanted to send the Philippian church the revelation of joy. Uh, the, the church at Philippi began because of a supernatural vision experienced while Paul was still ministering in Troas. He had a vision in the night of a man from Macedonia who stood at his bedside pleading with him to come and give them the gospel. Now, I, I would, I, hey, Holy Spirit, I, we're, everybody in this room would love to have that happen. You can wake us up any time, any night, yes. and have somebody, we, 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 even we could see personally. Uh, I believe he's going to do that with us. We're going to see people in visions 
and he's going to connect us with them the same supernatural way. I believe he's going to, because this gospel is going to be, as we said last week, the, the, this, this, um, this gospel is going to be poured out. The spirit is going to be, is being poured out on all flesh. Since the day of Pentecost, and, and, and at the end, it's going to be uh, even the most, uh, the, 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 the best wine is being saved for the very last mm -hmm. of this wedding that he's preparing to, to bring, and he's inviting us all to. Mm -hmm. uh, amen? amen? So uh, then he goes on to say he met. Uh, but then the next section there, it says, Paul's words in this, in this letter point us to heaven. He teaches us that our true life is not only in this world, but it is in the heavenly calling, the heavenly realm, and in our heavenly life that was given to us through Christ, the heavenly man. He left heaven to, to redeem us and reveal the heart of God, the heart of a servant. He gave us a new birth that we, that we would be heavenly lights in this dark world as witnesses of Christ's power to change our lives. That's the significance of what the gospel does, is it actually changes a person's life. When they get translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into his dear, this kingdom of his dear son, it, it causes a change in that person's life. Um, and then so he, 18 times the, the joy is used in this. Uh, Paul tells us the purpose. This is the purpose. The last sentence of the purpose is Paul tells us that God seated us in the heavenly realm in his place of authority and power. See, we're seated in, in Ephesians. We, we looked at that, remember? We're seated with him in heavenly places in Christ. So we're, we're seated. He seated us in this heavenly realm in a, in a place of authority and power. No wonder we should have joy in our hearts. Uh, is it any wonder we should? Now, um, going back, going into the, the basic uh, part of the letter, we don't have time to go, uh, read the whole thing or go through the whole thing, but I am going to look at your notes here because I want us to see some of the things that that Paul prayed over the Philippian church, and he's praying, he's prayed as he, he's the apostle to the Gentile church. All of us, all of the, all the prayers that Paul prayed are still significant to us as Gentile believers. Every single one of them has still has an anointing. Every prayer that Jesus prayed, the prayer that he prayed in John 17 is significant for us today. The same love that, that he loved, that Jesus said that they would know that the same love that you love me, that you, this is the same love that you, with which you love them. That was a prayer of Jesus and it's coming to pass as we see the power of the gospel. Um, I'm going to do a message, in, you know, on Easter that well, I'm not going. To, I'm, I don't want to go there because I'll, I'll get on it. But anyway, I think there's some, there's something so powerful about what happened um, in the death and resurrection of Jesus that that we are just just on the on the very fringes of really understanding the dimension of that and the power of that. But it's going to be uh, more and more amazing as Jesus is more and more unveiled. When I, you know, 12 years, 13 years ago, Jesus was veiled. I had him as my savior. Yes. I knew that grace had something to do with it. But boy, was it, was I looking in a mirror dimly. Mm -hmm. But we're all coming to the place where we're going to see him face to face. Mm -hmm. Wow. But in that, in that transition, in that, in that revelatory change that's going on, we're, he's, the Holy Spirit is, in, is more and more clearly unveiling him and everything that he is, everything that he's done, and everything we are because of what he's done. Because as, I see Susan, I see, but, yep, Susan, Susan's there, as he is, so are we when we get to heaven, right? In this world. But it comes by revelation. It comes by unveiling. So the first prayer in Philippians um, it's only 10, 1032. Well, look at that. We got, we got plenty of time. Uh, verse 2 of chapter 1. May the blessings, and we, I just declare this over this church, over this body, in the body of Christ, that's coming out uh, into a, a new, uh, a, a new um, outpouring of the true message of the true gospel that's coming forth in the earth. Uh, the old is going to continue to diminish 
and the new is begin is going to continue to shine, and, and it's going to shine brighter and brighter, brighter until that day. Uh, look at this. this uh, may the may the blessings of divine grace and supernatural peace that flow from God, our wonderful Father and our Messiah, the Lord Jesus, be upon your lives. That was Paul's prayer for us. And so in all of our GCH family responds to Paul prayer with a joyous amen. 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 Jesus is the amen. amen to every promise. Our part, he's the one that, that performed to receive the promise. And our part is to say amen. 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 Now, uh, the next verse uh, is also the Passion Translation in chapter 1. In verse, I see, the, I see some good amens there. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, when the angels, the first message the angels said when Jesus was being born was glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Yes. Goodwill. He had a yes. goodwill, a good purpose, yes. a good destiny yes. uh, because of Jesus coming to that little uh, town of Bethlehem, the house of bread. The bread of heaven was coming to the house of bread to be the bread of life for all of us. Hallelujah. Isn't that an amazing thing? And when he was born, he was Emmanuel, God with us. At the cross, he became God for us. And at Pentecost, he became God in us. What a transition. Now he lives in you because you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And he has poured out his spirit upon all flesh. Emmanuel is God with us. When he was born, he was God with us. When he went to the cross, he was God for us, as us. And when he, when Pentecost came, he was actually God in us. He moved in. Um, what a wonderful truth the gospel is. So the second, in verse 6, he says, I, and this is Paul praying again, I pray with great faith for you. And, I, and that word faith is a conviction of truth. He knew the truth. He got it personally from the Lord, a revelation of the Lord himself. Because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully, now who's faithful here? God. He's faithful. Faithfully continue the process of maturing you. Now look at this word unveiling. And until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ, a full unveiling, and we're going to see that here in just a minute in another verse. So what do we say to that? Amen. 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 Just put. I, I think it's good to write it in that space and say it out loud. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because there's joy in that. There's peace in knowing, but there's joy when you believe, when you're believing when you believe it. You know it. It brings peace when you know it. But when you when you, when you when your heart believes it, when he does exactly what he says is when that when he he's the one that authors and finishes this work in us. And every heart, I'll say this because maybe somebody be watching this, I don't know, two weeks from now or a month from now or whatever. But every heart, it, you're not dis nobody is disqualified. Everybody is qualified to receive the good news of this gospel because Jesus did for us what none of us ever could ever do, right. no matter how hard we tried. That's right. And so everybody is qualified to receive this. And the Holy Spirit is being poured out on all flesh today, all flesh. And that, that little mustard seed of faith that Jesus has to offer, he just, it, all, when the good news is preached, uh, it, it, can, it, it can fall on a heart by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to open that, that ground to be good ground so that that little seed can come in and penetrate. And when it does, what does he say happens to that seed? It becomes the biggest tree on the earth where all the birds, all the, everything, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all it takes is that little bit, uh, and we're going to see this um, in a couple of weeks when, I, when we talk about, uh, I'm going to use some, some chemistry, um, uh, some of the stuff that I taught in chemistry to illustrate that, the message of the, of the resurrection. So uh, he will faithfully continue the process of maturing in, uh, you until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then, uh, now look at Philippians chapter 1. Um, I'm going to get over there in the New King James because I'm going to be using that. Um, in, 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 very few ver in a few verses, I actually like the King James a little bit better. Uh, it seems a little bit more uh, impactful. I love the sudden impact of the truth, don't you? Mm -hmm. I like that sudden realization. 
when you know it's the spirit of truth that's hitting your heart with revelation. Mm -hmm. He says, um, this is a like a, a bits and pieces of seven through eleven. You are, you all are partakers with me of grace. And this I pray, here he is praying again, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. Now, discernment again <clears throat> is not just about what's right and wrong, but the, the key to discernment is what, between what's right and what's almost right. Amen? Amen. That's what, that's what, in fact, it's such a, it's such a, uh, a supernatural thing sometimes that the Holy Spirit actually has to give you a gift of discernment. Mm -hmm. it, it becomes a supernatural gift of the Spirit because it can sometimes seem that close, mm -hmm. but can be that off. Mm -hmm. The difference between what's right and what's almost right. And that's, the, that's how the enemy is so deceptive. Getting away from anything that's simple, um, any complexity is not of the Spirit of God. Now, uh, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by your continual effort to be good. Yeah. What does it say? Jesus. Which are by Jesus Christ. So then the glory and praise goes to who? God. God. Amen. 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 So that, that's what his prayer is, that we, would, that we would have that discernment and knowledge about him, that it's all about him and nothing about that's us, right. and that we're living in, it, that he's living in us, in our life now, just like he says in Galatians 2.20. It's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in the, in the, in the, the, the what it, what's happening now is that he's working out of me. Amen? Amen. So everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now write that down, because... We're saying amen to one, three wonderful prayers that Paul prayed for the Philippian church, a supernatural Philippian church. Mm -hmm. You know that this church at Grace Center Houston is a supernatural church? Yes. Because it was born of his spirit by the same way that the truth was proclaimed. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful this morning that we that we can that we are actual part of a part of a segment of the body of Christ that's coming out of this uh, the delusion and this this the, what the enemies tried to do to corrupt the message of the gospel and bringing us into a place of understanding it, the truth of the gospel of grace yeah. and not mixing it back with the old system. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Uh, now, Philippians 1.21 says, and this, this is where, uh, I want to stop here just for a second because this really illustrates the most joyful verse in Philippians to me. Yeah. And it wouldn't seem that way from a natural, but see, remember what we just said, Paul wrote this pointing us heavenward, pointing us to the reality of where we are, where we already are, how we got there. The gospel brought us into this heavenly place that we're seated with him. And so uh, Philippians 1.21, he says, for me, this is also the, the uh, New King James. I didn't put, if I don't put a TPT there, then it's, it's New King James. For me, how far to me to live is Christ. So as long as I'm living, my life is Christ living in me. Now if that doesn't give you joy, uh, the, the realization of that, but then he says something that seems peculiar to someone that's in the world. And to die is what? Gain. Gain. Okay. I put a scripture in there because I want you to see what he's talking about. I believe he wrote, uh, I mean, he did, he did write uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. Anybody remember what 1 Corinthians 13 is? The love, the love chapter. 1 Corinthians 13. And he just prayed that we get, we get a, a supernatural awareness of, it, of this love. But this, this verse has helped me more than many, many scriptures in, uh, in Paul's writings because it made me, it made me see myself for the rea in the reality of how he sees me, anybody want to do that? See, we're looking in a we're looking in a mirror, beholding as in a mirror. It says the glory of the Lord. We are being changed into the very image, but there's still in that mirror sometimes a little fogginess in there. You know, we have to sometimes we have to put our you know, hand on that and wipe that fog out of the way so we can see a little more clearly the reality of this. But so that's why I love this. Uh, 
uh, let's, let's, start, let's go ahead and read verse 13. It says, Now abide faith, hope, love, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Now let's back up to what, what he's really referring to here. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am, just as also am known, I am also known. So there's coming a time when you come face to face with him, and this this unveiling is already happening. Because now you, you, you see yourself more clearly like him than you did three years ago. You see you see his likeness in you now more than you did three years ago, right? That's that revelation, that unveiling is a continual process. It will have its fulfillment in the moment that you are. There is a there is a man named Jesus who is still a man in heaven with his scars. But when you when we get face to face with him, that's why he's, that's why for those that have passed on, Paul had he was confused as to whether he wanted to stay here or go because the joy was in knowing the fulfillment was one day that you're going we're going to be with him forever. But this this part where he says, "I shall I shall know just as I am also known." So that's where we're growing in grace right now. We're growing in the under the identity and inheritance. That's the other eye I forgot when I was praying earlier. Uh, the two eyes, uh, identity and inheritance. See, he already knows me the way I really am. He already knows you the way you really are, in the perfect likeness of his son. He see he knows you that way. He sees you that way. Is there any joy in that? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's supernatural joy when you have that reality that he already sees you the way that you really are. Mm -hmm. Our confusion is sometimes we don't see ourselves the way we really are. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves the way we think we still are or the way we were in some, some you know, pre, uh, when we switched Adams, when we came, you know, we became, we came, became dead to the first husband and, and married to the new husband, Jesus Christ. But that, that, that's, that's comforted, me, comforted me so much uh, to realize that, see, I'm not going to have to, when I get there, I'm not going to have to kind of describe giving my, my uh, resume. <laughs> I won't have to give Jesus my resume because I'm his resume. Uh -huh. Amen? That's good. I'm the perfect light. I'm standing up here as a, as a person that's still in the, this body still connected to this, this world. But I'm standing here as a new creation in Christ. Mm -hmm. All things have become new. Mm -hmm. yeah. All things. Mm -hmm. And so He's already sees us that way. Yes. And there's, I mean, and there's joy. There's supernatural joy in that. Mm -hmm. When we walk, if we walk around, go ahead. Yeah. I love that. I love what you're saying because all I can think of right now is, and He likes me. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's cute. I like that. Yeah. And that's all that matters in this world. Amen. Amen. We want all these people to like us, but honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I hate to use this analogy, but what do you always say? Thank you, but that's not quite true. Oh. It's not necessary. Or something yeah, your good opinion of me is not not it's is, nice. is, is it's wanted. Nice. It's nice, it's but not necessary. Joseph yeah, Prince says, like that. That. says that. Yeah. So, but but the good see, he has a good opinion of us because we're just like him. We are our spirit in our in our new creation. We're exactly like him. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful truth that is. Yeah. Amen. Now, uh, so to die is gain. For, for, for a person that has the supernatural joy of the Holy Spirit, we know that there's nothing that we can get but more of Him when we leave here. More, and not, I don't mean by more of Him in actuality, but more of Him in understanding and revelation. It'll, there'll be no more looking through anything, any uh, pre-revelation. Pre, uh, pre it, it'll all be completely revealed. But I, th I thank God that we're living in a generation with the church that's going to be caught, you know, caught with Him, going to be joined to Him in a, in, a, in a marriage. That we're He's letting us see that now. He's letting us. He's letting us. The, the, the veil's coming off. He's lifting the veil. You know, when you mm -hmm. kiss the bride, when I kissed mm -hmm. Deborah on the day we got married, I, the, the veil went up. Yeah. And and see that that veil is coming up right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. And He's He's showing us His marvelous love and. and joy and, and this just gives me such joy to, to realize this so even death is a gain to me to the world it's not to the world it's a loss to everything they, that they know and everything they think that's going to bring them happiness 
But when I leave this earth, there's going to be more. I'm going to gain more in my understanding of how he already knows me. And I won't have to prove anything to him. I won't have to give him any, any uh, acknowledgement. He'll know, he knows me perfectly now. He loves me perfectly now. Uh, and the joy of that will change my life outwardly Amen. Amen. because it will cause me to work out my salvation because I have it already. Salvation doesn't come from the outside in. It comes from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh, I love, I love. by the way, I love the comments. I go back and look, look at them uh, afterwards. I love everybody's comments. I wish Mary and Todd were looking forward to seeing y'all next year. And, and uh, for those that, you know, uh, know Lana's in Tennessee and all over the place, but we just love the fact that you can join us. Uh, I hope Todd's uh, recliner is still comfortable. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Philippians 2, chapter 2, verse 1. Now, look, just look at how much encouragement you found in your relationship with the Anointed One. You are filled to overflowing with His comforting love. You know, when Briscoe was playing this morning, I can tell uh, when he reaches a point where <laughs> there's an overflow, he can't, it, it comes out of him. You know, he, he begins to break up. All of us do because there's a soup that supernatural love produces a supernatural joy, um, and it comes that you are filled with overflowing with this, that comforting love. You can't help but be overwhelmed. You know, I've never been underwhelmed by his when I have a realization of his love. Amen. I've been underwhelmed with some other people, other people that may not that may say they care. You know, but uh, <clears throat> what I, what I don't know why I went there, but. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, the, the, Jesus can never give us anything but perfect acceptance. Yes, Overwhelming. Overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, you have, everybody say experienced. Experience. A deepening friendship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And have felt His tender affection. And the Holy Spirit's a person. It's not just a, pu a puff of wind. The Holy Spirit is a person, and, and, you're, and you have experienced, all of us in this room have experienced and are experiencing a deepening friendship with the Holy Spirit and have felt his tender affection and mercy. I was feeling it this morning when Briscoe was, was playing worship. <clears throat> this is our spiritual inheritance and our daily joy. That, that goes, I didn't give you much of a blank there, but you get the, you okay. get the message. Uh, this is our spirit. This is this is our daily uh, supernatural spiritual inheritance. Is that that we are filled with this understanding, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the knowledge of our our inheritance and our identity, brings daily joy to us. That's our heritage, as as a new creation in Christ. Uh, in spite of any circumstance that would try to make us feel otherwise. Amen. Romans eight seventeen. I put that in there. I'm going to put that in there as a caveat to that. Uh, Romans 8, 17 says that we are heirs of God himself and that, that we have all that he is and all that he has. That's our inheritance. All that he is and all that he has. He's already deposited that. Of his fullness we have all received. We don't have a partial download. Mission Impossible, mm -hmm. where they almost have it. Remember they get the disc, you know the disc is about... Mm -hmm. We got to get the disc and get out of there, or they're going to lose it. It's a it's a complete download. Nobody can interfere with that. So then he says, uh, chapter two, verse thirteen: Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's with awe and worship, because of how wonderful the the truth of it is. For it is God who works in you, both to provide a willingness and and to, to perform for His good pleasure. He gives us the willingness, and He provides the performance. Um, do all things without complaining, oh boy. Maybe we should skip over this one. No. Y'all want to skip over this part? Uh -oh. I, I, I have, yeah, you want to edit? Maybe we can edit this part. I just put. Anybody got some some white out? I can. No, maybe I better. Maybe I better say this. Do do all things without complaining and disputing. Uh oh. <coughs> I'm in trouble. That you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. So, you know, the, 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 the world and the, the, spirit, the, the, the spirits that now work in the, children, the sons of disobedience, the ones that have not 
switched atoms. Um, there's there's so much out there that causes us can can try to bring draw us into it, draw us into the complaining mm -hmm. and draw us into the murmur and disputing. It's not coming out of our spirit. Mm -hmm. It's coming with interaction from from what's going on around us. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying, maybe we should, maybe that's not the best way for us to become these lights that shine in a dark place because if everybody's complaining about what's going around going on and they see supernatural joy on us instead they are gonna say wait a minute why aren't you joining in this grumble, grumbling party about how bad the government is or how, how bad the whatever is you know I'm not trying to, there's no condemnation. In fact, if you're feeling condemnation, you're missing exactly what I'm trying to say. And that mm -hmm. is that there is no condemnation. Therefore, there's no reason for us to, to grumble. Go ahead, okay. grumble. Well, I, I believe that when we, when we are feeling like we're under the law, we feel like we're failing, we feel condemned inwardly, yeah. is when we grumble and complain. Yeah. yeah. Because Jesus is not grumbling or complaining because... There's victory. Absolutely. And we have the same victory. Amen. And we forget we have that victory. And that's when we start to complain and grumble. Yeah. That's a good way. I hope y'all all heard my wife straighten me thinking. out in what, what I was what I was saying. <laughs> I mean you put it in better perspective. It's it's it, there's nothing there's no condemnation in it. But I think the Holy Spirit, because of the supernatural joy he wants us to heaven's joy, he wants us to live in. And I'm saying I'm saying this to myself because I I do this every week. I get I get caught up in all the rhetoric that's going around in the in, in the country, mm -hmm. you know. All you have to do is turn the TV on and get caught. Up. Absolutely, you'll have plenty of people to help you in your grumbling and complaining. They'll they'll give you plenty of fuel for that. Yeah. Uh, all you got to do is just listen to somebody that that that's not operating in heaven's joy. And I and I say that because it wasn't a natural thing for Paul to sit in that prison cell, knowing he had, you know, if they only knew who I really was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't go back. We didn't go on and read that part. If you go on and read it, when they were wanting to turn him loose, those magistrates that put him in there to start with, he said, "Hey, we're not going anywhere. You tell them to come down here and take us out of here." <laughs> Roman citizens, by the way, we we're Roman citizens, and of course they were all <clears throat> because you could get you could get uh, killed by the Roman government if you beat somebody that was a Roman citizen without cause. They could, they would take they could take your life. That's a, that was a that was a, a, a criminal offense of that that was that that could deserve the death penalty in Rome. So these guys were not in too good a mood there. But see, Paul wasn't he wasn't focused on that. His, his it was a supernatural joy, and it's a supernatural joy for us. We're not trying to be joyful in our circumstances. The power of the Holy Spirit wants to make us joyful in the midst of our circumstances, and that's what I want to live out of. I want to work that out of the salvation that I have um, and hold fast to the word of life. Philippians 3, chapter 3, verse 1, the Passion Translation. My beloved ones, don't ever limit your joy or fail to rejoice in the wonderful experience of knowing our Lord Jesus. Circumstances will take away from the, the, the eternal permanence of that truth. Amen. I don't mind repeating what I've already written to you because it protects you. If I say this over and over to you, and I'm, I'm guilty of that, I say some things over and over up here, but it's for, for our protection because we have to beware of the religious hypocrites uh, that are teaching that people need to be go, go back to works, going back to doing something. Uh, the, back then it was circumcision uh, to please God. Now look, look, look how wonderful this is written. For we have already experienced heart circumcision. I have a new heart that he put there a new spirit that he put there because Jesus was a life-giving spirit or is a life-giving spirit now um, and we worship God in the power and freedom of the Holy Spirit not in laws and religious duties we are those who boast in what Jesus has done and not in what we can accomplish on our own strength isn't that wonderful mm -hmm. therefore based on this context what would limit our joy what would cause our joy to become more limited? Going back, going back to boast and, not, and boasting in what we've done instead of what Christ has done, or going back to thinking it's about us and not about Jesus. And and I'll I'll, I'll admit, 
it's stolen my joy. Uh, for thir for especially thir up to up to 13 years ago, it had completely it, it had completely almost eradicated my joy because I thought it was about what I'm supposed to be doing. Amen. That's what religion will tell us. And it was happening then, and it's happening now. But praise God, there's discernment now. There's discernment in the church, and I declare discernment in the church yeah. to pick up the difference between right and almost right, and get yeah. out the old Adam and bring in the the, the, the new Adam that we're connected to. That's um, so um, that's what would limit our joy. Therefore, Philippians three eight that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. And then the last scripture, verse chapter 3, verse 20, and then verse 4, chapter 4, verse 1, the Passion Translation. But we are a colony of heaven on earth as we cling tightly to our life giver, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, then Paul says, now arise in the fullness of your union with our Lord. He's saying to the church, uh, to our church, to the church in, in, that's in the world today, and our, just now arise to the fullness of your union. You are one spirit with the Lord, you're one flesh with him, one body, and this is the unity of the faith. The unity of the faith is all coming to the understand the truth that it's, that it's everything about what Jesus has done and it's nothing about we're, what we're doing. Now, does that mean okay? Let's just everybody's going to somebody's going to interpret that who's not really embracing the truth. Well, that means I can just go do whatever I want. Just try that from a real from a from, from a, in a real relationship. Just try, just try that. It's not that's not what he's talking about. And if you're still if that's your perspective, you don't know the grace of God in truth. The grace of God in truth removes that 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 fullness of union will cause us to to become fruitful. Um, instead of instead of laboring, I'll never. I, I, the only labor that uh, uh, Hebrews talks about is laboring to enter into His rest. That's the only labor that's that's of the new covenant. So arise, uh, labor to enter into His rest to the fullness of your union with our Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead then and, and take a, a communion this morning. Anybody have anything they want to add? Right, any questions or comments? I'm just going to make a you know a confession about. I recognize as I was preparing this and looking at, at, at this letter, how much I let joy slip away from my life, and for the reasons he's talking about here. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know we we can. You know. Where is Eden now? Guard, you know, the Eden we have is in our heart. He said, "Guard your heart," yeah. because out of it flow the issues of our life. You know, it's, it's there's a um, and I and when we come into agreement with with uh, things that aren't, uh, he says, uh, "Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are a good report, whatsoever things are," he said, "Focus on those things." Mm -hmm. Uh, Risco's got a great focus these days. He's he's uh, <laughs> ministering to monarch butterflies, oh, yeah. Yeah. and uh, so he's he's uh, yeah, they're back from Mexico. Or, uh, yeah, I think that's a. I mean, it's it's a. Do you have a lot of them right now? Oh yeah. Uh huh. I wonder if some of them are Can somewhere I bring raised. Can I over? <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there are quite a few. What, what if, went to the park and saw four? What if the body of Christ operated that way toward? Yeah. Toward the people around us, nurturing it, yeah. Instead of so talking about you know that 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 fly that's in them, that's, yeah, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's made it made a deposit in their life from the from the what's he what's he called the Lord of the Flies, you know. I, I just I just I want to understand and and work walk in the joy heaven's joy, and that can't come except by by staying uh, staying in this position of being uh, um, how did it, how did he put it uh, closely holding on to what Jesus has done and who we are in Him and letting our mouth be you know just be putting a guard on what we say. Because it sounds right to us at the time, and it sounds just, but 
we yeah we 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 weren't we weren't saved by natural justice. Right. It was a supernatural justice. Right. We didn't deserve what we got. We got it free. Amen. And the, and the world is in the same situation today. That's right. Uh, they they well, I'm getting ahead of myself in messages, but it's it was because of one man's disobedience. Yeah. Uh, but one man's obedience is what we're what we're clinging to now. So yes, that's yeah. that that's Jesus Christ who became our advocate, became our substitute, right. took our place, removed all the bad, so that He could give us all of His goodness. Right. And we declare that today. We just uh, um, over the body of Christ. Man. One of these days, I'm going to my, my kids are have been in a Bible study in another church where they where they focused on Nehemiah, and they have just turned it into such a work. A book, a letter of such works in the church, and so they were asking me, Lord, he said, you know, Dad, you know, what, you know, how do we interpret this? Because they're giving us this interpretation, and we're going to go, we'll do that someday in Nehemiah, because it's a beautiful illustration of of the, the reconciling work to prepare yeah. us as the temple for His for Him coming, and, and it does say that that temple that they were re rebuilding in Nehemiah was actually the one that Jesus was going to step into, mm -hmm. and said, and then Malachi says, and suddenly He will come to His temple. He walked into that temple um, and became. The, uh, there was no. There was no more Ark of the Covenant after the Babylonian ca uh, <coughs> captivity. There was never again the the uh, Ark of the Covenant that was inside the behind the veil, because Jesus was the Holy. He was the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. and he was walking in, and he was going to walk through that veil with his own with his own death, and tear it down, tear it down, and he did separated it. But it says that there's a verse in Nehemiah that I'm going to do for communion today. It says that, go your way, eat the fruit, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. Send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. This is the table that he prepared before us in the presence of our enemies. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. Do not sorrow. Eat of the fat and drink the sweet. This is the, there's nothing that has more fatness and substance to it, to it, to it except the, besides the body of Christ. And that's what they were illustrating back then, by the way. And the, uh, drinking the sweet. There's nothing sweeter than what Jesus accomplished by his blood in our life. And so the eating of this substance of his flesh and drinking the substance of what his blood did. See, there's nothing that can stop the joy of, of the Holy Spirit in our life when we really embrace that truth. And that joy, His joy, becomes our strength because it's His work that gave us the access to His joy. And so, Lord, we thank You for Your body and what You did for us. We thank You for the, the fatness of, of all the things You accomplished in Your body. And we, we declare that we, are, we have an inheritance of all those things because You earned them for us. We don't earn them by our obedience. We earn them because of Your obedience. And we thank you that every promise is yes and amen in you. So we thank you for your body and what it means to our bodies. And we rejoice in this. And we're not going to sorrow as if we're examining ourselves because we're supposed to look and see that this is about you. When we look and see it's about you, there's no way we cannot be joyful about it. Um, and that joy is our strength today and forever. Thank you, Lord, for your body. And Lord, your blood, the sweetness. Drink the sweet, it said. He said, and Lord, we send, we send, like I said, we send portions for those whom nothing is prepared. There's a lot of people that don't know this truth, and so we're sending out the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to those that don't even know it's a it's a prepared meal for everyone. This is this is free access for everyone. Nobody has to be good to earn it, because He was good in your place. Yeah. Thank you for the joy that this brings as we drink the sweet, Lord. This is, there's nothing sweeter than your love that was poured out you, by your life as a substitution for our lives. There's just nothing sweeter than that. And Lord, manifest the supernatural joy of your Holy Spirit in, as, we, as we glorify Jesus in this, in this moment, as we remember him in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Heaven's joy. Okay, next week we're gonna we're gonna talk. We're gonna do Colossians, and it's about heaven's hope.
And hope is, we have hope now because Jesus is the anchor of that hope through the veil of, of his torn flesh. And so uh, we'll, talk, we'll see you all next week. We're thankful for everyone that was able to join us this morning. Uh, looking forward to those. I know that you know a lot of them are, a lot of people are traveling this week. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity for that. In Jesus' name, y'all be blessed, and, and uh, we'll see you next week. Amen. Yeah, just kept on that.